I'm Judy Richards, and I'd like to welcome Alex Polakoff, Green Party candidate for House District 23. Well, thanks so much for having me here, Judy. Appreciate the opportunity. It's a pleasure. Tell us about your positions and your experience that would encourage a senior or a person with a disability to vote for you. Well, for one thing, I am a senior. Uh, now, most of my friends and family are uh, seniors. Um, so I've been exposed to a lot of the issues that seniors are facing. For one thing, I recently retired. So I lost my employer-based insurance, which a lot of people do, not just seniors. Um, and so was exposed to the shockingly high uh, premiums and deductibles that people face out on the open market. So um, as part of that, I've been advocating for uh, universal health care for many, many years now. And so I'm a member of Mid Valley Healthcare Advocates and Healthcare for All Oregon, who have been advocating for universal uh, publicly funded uh, uh, health care for, for all Oregonians. So I've been involved in that for quite a while. Uh, I've done quite a, a bit of volunteering. Um, apart from that, my uh, governmental experience is as, as a board of directors for the Corvallis Rural Fire Protection District. So I've been exposed to budgeting and governance issues that way as well. Thank you. Oregon Project Independence is a cost-effective program that keeps seniors and people with disabilities in their own home, and yet every year proposed funding for OPI is significantly cut. If elected, what would you do to protect the funding for OPI? Well, I would do whatever I can because I, I think it's a great idea to allow uh, seniors to age in place and uh, those who are disabled, allow them to remain in their homes. Um, for one thing, um, it's good for the, their health, both uh, physical and mentally, to stay in their community uh, as well as it's good for the community to have that th them be there, have that continue. So it's a win in, uh, on that respect. In that respect, um, also it's cost effective, as you said, because it costs a lot less to allow people to remain in their home than to house them somewhere in some uh, residential facility. Uh, could be an order of magnitude of savings. So. Um, it's a win-win as far as the government's concerned. So I would do what I, whatever I could to uh, support that beyond, you know, beyond it being a pilot project, have it be a continued uh, supported um, agency. Thank you. Alex, how would you prioritize state funding, including funding that is matched with federal funds such as Medicaid for services to an increasing senior and people with disabilities population? Well, that, that funding is critical, and um, I support efforts like uh, we have some great representatives like Dan Rayfield, who has fought to keep that funding established. You know, we have Oregon, fortunately, was one of the states that expanded Medicaid um, right away with the Affordable Care Act. So I support that expansion. I would support expanding it further. Um, as well as, as I said before, I'm, I'm a proponent of universal health care. So, so I'm supporting even beyond Medicaid, having everyone covered. Uh, but mm -hmm. in the meantime, I would uh, fully support and think that's critical to keep the, the, those funds established and would support current efforts in the legislature uh, to keep that funding in place, like what Representative Brayfield did. Thank you. During the time of increased risk of homelessness and food insecurities, what would you do on a state level so that seniors and people with disabilities no longer face a lack of accessible, affordable housing and receive appropriate nutrition? Well, I think there's lots of ideas bandied about of how to how to address the homeless situation. I think there's some good ones as far as um, changing zoning regulations, allowing more higher density uh, housing. Um, as well as uh, ADUs or accessory dwelling units so that especially for uh, those who don't require large houses, it's something affordable um, that can help alleviate the crisis. I think one thing that could really benefit uh, the communities that uh, NWSDS serves as well is um, 
public housing. And one thing I'm a big proponent of is uh, establishing a, an Oregon State Bank. So part of the things that the state bank could do is uh, finance uh, public infrastructure. And one of the one of the things that that could go towards is um, more public housing. So because right now we're in a definite crisis, not just for seniors and those who are disabled, but the whole popu the whole population looking at um, uh, potential potential homelessness. So uh, that's what I see as, as I mean, I'm not I'm not an authority on it. I would be would, as I learn more, I would be looking at other solutions. But that's one thing I see as as steps to addressing that. As well as again for nutrition, fully funding uh, SNAP programs and um, OAA for those who aren't covered by uh, the SNAP. Thank you. What are your plans to improve the health of vulnerable seniors and people with disabilities, including people of color who traditionally suffer from more health disparities due to pre-existing conditions? Um. Well, not to sound like a broken record, but again, you know, I'm a big supporter of universal health coverage. That's for all Oregonians um, and uh, from a publicly funded system to keep profits out of the system. So that would help address uh, that, that vulnerable population, as well as what's happening with communities of color, especially in, during this pandemic. Um, we're seeing them in, you know, more um, an exaggerated impact on communities of color. And basically, it's a lack of affordable, accessible health care, uh, leading to condition, you know, chronic conditions, which makes them more susceptible to uh, things like this pandemic. So uh, that's that's one way I would address it. Also, the um, people who are even on Medicare still can wind up making terrible decisions as far as what are they going to pay for their prescription drugs versus, you know, rent, food, um, utilities. So part of that problem is the, the built in outrageous uh, costs of pharmaceuticals and prescription drugs. So even in Medicare, um, we still have seniors looking to have to go outside the country to get their prescription drugs. So universal health coverage, single payer system or publicly funded system would address that, as well as things like still having to pay premiums uh, for, for supplemental, like Medicare Advantage, which is going to insurance company profits when that money could be uh, going towards health care instead of propping up insurance companies. So it's something I feel very strongly on and would sponsor legislation for that uh, if elected. Thank you, Alex. Once again, thank you. Alex Polakoff, Green Party candidate for House District 23. Well, again, thank you so much for having me um, and stay safe. And I want to thank everyone for, th for tuning in and listening to my interview today with Alex Polakoff, Green Party candidate for House District 23.